In this tutorial I'll use the basic functions of iWarp. So I'll load my image. I have a, a recent image, a station clock. Now the filter, you just go straight into the filter. It's in distorts and then down to iWarp. We choose the swirl first, we click on swirl and then leave all the, everything else at the default settings. Just click on the bar there a couple of times. Don't uh, drag it, just click them on and off so it, it appears that the clock is under stress. Just click on the edges and in the face a little so you've got the hands are getting a bit distressed. Then we move up to move and we increase this to 50. Just highlight it and type in 50 and then just drag this down in that format there as though it's melting and then click OK and that's the basic functions of uh, iWarp on this particular image I'll just put in some text so I'll go into something a bit heavier uh, I'll choose Seabird and just push that up a little and I'll leave it in black and put my text in there okay and that's it and then we just right click the top layer and then flatten the image that's using iWarp in the very basic form and we'll just go and do another one click the iWarp, go and save this is what mainly iWarp can really do in adjusting people's uh, profiles this is the profile of a young girl I'll just increase this by hitting the plus key on the keyboard. You notice now that she has a double chin. She's got a nice profile, but she has a double chin. Because I used uh, the filters iWarp, it's still there. So I'll just go back into show iWarp. Now I need to change that back to 20. It's far too big for this particular exercise. And then I just move that up, move her double chin up. You notice the image is a little bit small to work with so I'll reset that you can see what's happening here I'll just reset that and cancel it go and get my select tool rectangular select tool and make a selection around that part of the girl there now I'll go to iWarp show the recent one and now I can work it with a bit bigger image so once again it's still set at a radius of 20 and I just move it up so she doesn't have a double chin and you can change other parts of the body in that also. You only need to do a little bit and just change, click, select, turn off your selection. While we're there, we notice we've got a little bit of blemishes in the face. We can clean it up with a smudge tool. If you go to the smudge tool and change the radius to about 20, 50 is far too high for this particular image. So we just put, move that down in the radius around about 20 and just smudge it as though you're putting on uh, your makeup. Notice there you smudge the, the blemishes out. It's just and it's a quick and easy way of doing it. That's given her a very pretty face. A little bit of a, a blemish there, so we can go to the healing tool, click on the uh, control key, and then hit the right, left mouse button, take a sample, and just click in there and take them blemishes away. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and that's just the basics of iWarp. There is other functions in there as well. You, uh, you can have animation. I'll just do the show, show the iWarp dialog. You can choose animation, and you, if you click the animator, you need to tell it how many frames you want to do when you do the motion, when you move something, and then you just save it as a GIF, GIF file. So thank you for watching. Visit the channel, and you'll find a link on how to do all this in a PDF format.